Hey everyone, I'm Argama Witch, and today I'm going to show you a kind of speed art tutorial-ish thingy uh, in how I'd made hair in Vroid. I was given this as a reference image and I ended up with this and we're going to go through that process. Uh, it took uh, a total time of about four hours to create in real time, but we're going to get through it in about eight and a half minutes. So <clears throat> let's get into it. So when I start off, uh, doing hair, I always use just a white or a base uh, color. I make sure I remove any any actual color though. Um, and if I do add any, it's later on in order to uh, know the different areas that are going to use different textures. So here I'm using, I want to get something that's close to the skull because it's supposed to be buns in the back of her head. And I don't want to use the base hairlines. They don't always look great. Sometimes I'll keep them in on after just to fill in any gaps that might be between the hairs. But for the most part, this is usually how I go. Since I know where I want them to go and they're very symmetrical, I put on the uh, symmetry tool and I start adjusting. Um, now in the back, usually when your hair splits, it kind of has like a zigzag pattern. So I wanted to try to mimic that here. And I do a lot of adjusting where the hair goes uh, and then I push it in closer to the skull and it might even clip through the skull a little bit. I just want this little bit shown. And um, from there I add a couple of extra hairs sticking out here and there because it's a slightly messy bun. Some hairs might even be poking out in the front. I adjust the thickness because I want them super thin. Well, not super super thin, but thin enough. And I'll do this with the bars on the side and so on. So now I'm just adding in the fringe or the bangs. This is usually the easiest part in my opinion. Uh, it will require some adjusting to make sure it doesn't clip through in the back and then I um, move everything to exactly where I want it. It's slightly tedious but you know it's it's not so bad. I also expand the base of some of these so it covers the holes a little bit more so you don't see any gaps. Yeah, that looks like it's looking pretty good for base. Now I'm trying to figure out how to do these buns on the side. And I need something underneath to kind of fill in. So I made really wide circles and then I tighten them in with this correction tool and then thicken the width and the thickness. So now I have something as kind of a guide. I make my grid for the new freehand much bigger and for this I tried to do something where I I went around it. Um, so it looks like they're kind of like pulled under and in on themselves. There's a few ways you could probably do this. This I felt was probably the easiest and quickest way and I say that even though it still took many hours to do. Um, and I'm readjusting the grid and the shape and size of these to kind of move them around, make them a little bit thicker so they fill in more of the gaps, and trying to adjust them as much as possible. Now adjusting the lines will adjust them both sides if the symmetry is on, but the thickness and width and anything else you adjust will not. You have to do that individually. So even if they're in the right area here, like on the other side, they're not going to be quite the same. So we'll have to fix the other side as well. And it's just a lot of like tinkering, trying to adjust things to move it around, make sure it looks fairly good. And now I'm doing the same to the other side. Getting the widths right. It's a lot of just tinkering back and forth between the side panels and moving where you exactly want things. The hair is very versatile in Vroid Studios. So now I'm expanding it a little bit more so I can make some stray hairs come out and about, uh, making sure they're much thinner. Because again, it's a, it's a messy bun. And I tuck them in towards the top because I just kind of want them to, to like poke out a little bit. Kind of like little spider legs almost. 
Yeah, yeah. Just like that. Oh, that's not bad. Um, I adjust it again and add a couple more so they're slightly higher and going in different angles. Yeah. Kind of give it more that messy, messier look. It's all about layers and layers and layers. Now I'm changing the textures. I, um, this is, a, I think this was just a base texture I had laying around or it might be the one I made for this. Uh, but I colored some areas in with a blue, which is going to end up being a different texture later on. Cause there's two textures I have, one with a shine and one without a shine. Um, and this is just me going through adjusting the width, the um, offset, which is how it wraps around the mesh itself. And then the highlight position, where I want the highlight on the hair to be. I try to line up the highlights as close as possible. And I usually try to do that in a circular pattern around the head. So it looks like, you know, the light's coming from directly above. I also try to line up my textures on the hair a little bit so it doesn't see uh, part of the texture cut off. Sometimes you can't always get it, but the, you do the best you can. And even if this isn't the texture I initially want for this hair, which I think I do just later on, uh, it's close enough that I'll still keep the highlights in generally the same area when I edit my textures, which I edit in a separate program in Clip Studio Paint, but you can use any uh, art program to do that. It would be a Photoshop Paint even. Uh, it's a little bit more of a challenge in such things like paint. Yeah, but you can see like I'm coloring these in because these are the ones that I want to have a different texture on. Hmm. And then I go to this other texture, I remove it and then I add it. So there's now this is her actual hair texture. It's slightly different. Um, I'm also adding in a few of the other non-highlighted textures in the front in order to give it a little more depth. Uh, here I am adjusting it. I don't want all of the textures to line up perfectly because that just looks weird and anyone who does that's kind of just lazy in my opinion. But <clears throat> uh, by adjusting it, it kind of gives it more of a depth and it looks like hair is going in every which direction and not just all lined up in neat little rows. Also, if the hairs kind of look a little too angular or blocky, there is a smoothing bar that I'll use. Uh, for the most part, it's really only if it's really, really bad. And since I have uh, a gradient on the hair textures, I can adjust the sliders to make things a little lighter and darker. Here I'm adding in the bones. I usually put them really low because I don't want them too close to uh, where the part is. I only want a slight movement and I also lower the bones down to a little. If you're doing this in MMD, you're probably going to want more bones. But for the most part, you know, you keep them down low and uh, you can just kind of see how, how it looks and just adjust accordingly. I always do a walking motion because that gives kind of the mo most bounce and then running. Check for clipping and how anything looks. I want to make sure like hairs aren't just randomly floating in places. You just kind of adjust, go along. It's the little finer details that make things like really look good together. And yeah. And that's pretty much it. And that's how I do it. Uh, I hope you learned something from here. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye! -bye.